Good morning, one and all, and welcome to episode 239 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays, coming to you live from YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. You'll find information on all of that in the video description below, as well as on how to support my work through coffee. And whether you are watching live or you're watching the recording, you're very welcome. Feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. I get round to most of them, all of them, I think, at some point. First comment goes to Andy saying, first comment, question mark, yes, first time. Well done, Andy. Hello, First Lays, loving your work as always. That's very, very kind. And I very much appreciate your support. Uh, Heinke says, what a great surprise. Hello, friend. For, hello, let's try that again. What a great surprise. Hello there from Munich. Uh, guten Tag, Heinke. And James says, uh, hello again from Indonesia. And hello, Mr. First Lays from Minneapolis, says QT. And Katzi is watching again. So this is... For, probably, almost certainly, unless I get some incredibly tempting new release sample arriving in the post, this is going to be the final regular review video of the year. I will pack up the, the, the studio for a few days to indulge in all sorts of festive cooking. Um, ginger, gingerbread biscuits are on the agenda for today together as another attempt at a meringue because I have yet to find a meringue recipe that is 100% entirely foolproof. If you have such a thing, <laughs> send it to me, please. Um, managed to order a copy of your book, says Jeannie. Can't wait to read it. Oh, wow. I'm very, very touched. I hope you didn't pay an arm and a leg for it because I know there are some people online who charge ridiculous amounts of money for it. Um, and I, I wonder if they get those amounts of money because it's one thing charging a lot of money and another thing actually getting it. Pine Rock says, I'm going to be late for work. Or, well, get to work. <laughs> Uh, will they be iced, says Andy? Oh, the biscuits. Yes, they probably will, but that is Madame Persilaise's department, so I'll make the biscuits. You can do the icing. Anyway, let us not talk too much about culinary delights, although there is kind of one on, on the cards coming up, because I wanted, to, I wanted to do my best to bring this brand to your attention. It's called, can you see that there? It's called Milano Fragranze, Milano Fragranze. Um, as it says, established 2020, but they really only came to my attention this year, and they come from the same group that has given us Mask Milano. They were It was set up by Alessandro Brun, who of course was very, very uh, gracious enough to give us some of his time on this channel uh, in a, for a live interview a little while ago. <clears throat> so as I say, I only became aware of the brand, their, their um, eight cents this year when I got this little um, discovery set. Um, they've also got a new one coming up that I think is going to go on official release very, very soon. And it's called Panettone. Um, but I've cheated. They very kindly sent me their, their genius advent calendar, really, really brilliant advent calendar. Not only is it brilliant because it's got lots of samples of their perfumes, but also because it's got little vials of the various raw materials and accords that have gone into the perfumes. And that, that is a fantastic idea because when you go through the advent calendar, you end up getting quite a stash of, of uh, raw material goodies. But their Panettone scent was, was uh, meant to have been opened for those of us who follow such things on the 25th of December, but I cheated and got straight into it because I wanted to see what it smells like. We're not going to smell every single one here, because we haven't got the time, but there are three that I would particularly like to bring to your attention. They're all interesting in their own ways. Some of them are maybe a little bit more predictable than others. So which is which is the sort of, so Brera, as it says here, is rose, saffron, and patchouli. And if you think you know exactly what that smells like as soon as I say rose, saffron, patchouli, then, then you've got it. it. It's very much that kind of Middle Eastern loving, Middle, Middle Eastern, um, centered or aimed uh, rose saffron patchouli scent. Uh, there's there's a very good uh, white floral called Cortile. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing these names. Um, then there's the, the there's another sort of osmanthusy white floral called La Prima. The, the, they're, they're all worth checking out, but there are three that I would particularly like to focus on. And then I should also mention the the, the panettone because I wasn't I wasn't overly taken with the panettone but then even though I adore panettone and one of my favorite things to get at Christmas is those little um individual packages of panettone I love the small ones because you can sort of open them and, and have each one in one go but this is this is panettone that to me is 
oh yeah, just, just trying a little bit too hard. Because what I love about panettone is it's bready smell, it's yeasty smell. And the fact that that breadiness is combined with the sugariness and, and the dried fruit and the icing sugar. Whereas here, it's like sweet, sweet, sweet. And it's like mega, mega gourmand. So it may, it, it, it may end up having a lot of fans. But yeah, for me, this was too much. I need to put that blotter a little bit further away because it's going to interfere with everything else. Um, I hope your baking goes to plan and turns out well, says Claire. So do I. So what are the, what are the ones that I wanted to mention to you? Well, uh, let's get them out here so that I'm not struggling with the vials. It's Galeria was one of them and Basilica and also Diorno, Diorno, uh, Derby, by the way, is, is, is a very well done green fragrance. Um, and what is it about these that is particularly worth your attention? Let's start with the D Diurno. Um, not the biggest fan of Gourmand, says QT. No, um, they, a lot of people do love them, obviously, as, as, as we know. Now, let's respray this one and let's put it next to the Lego Persolais. Um, yeah. So do you know sells itself as a as a fougere with a twist? And that is exactly what it is, because you get that kind of fresh, bright, um, just stepped out of the shower, lavendery, geraniumy cleanliness that you would expect from a good fougere. But Please make a video of you baking, says James. Would love to watch it. <laughs> Let's save that for another life. When I've got literally nothing else to do, we can start a food channel. But me baking and cooking, yeah, it, go, it all goes a little bit Gordon Ramsay sometimes. Um, not most of the time, but sometimes, sometimes it does. So maybe that might not make such a good video. Um, but I do, you know, you saying that. Um, I do sometimes post little Instagram stories of the cooking that I do. So go over to Instagram. But what was I saying? The thing that gives this one an interesting twist is an addition of a very, very convincing, completely unexpected um, amaretto note, a sort of almondy amaretto note. So it's like an amaretto fougere. Um, so that, yes, you've got that kind of clean, well-scrubbed quality, but, <laughs> but, but also somebody who... Is, is just about to hit the town or maybe has just got into the shower after having had, you know, after having hit the town. Um, and, it, it, and it just works because I think there's something, there's something about the brightness and the sharpness of amaretto, maybe almost something camphory that ties in with the, with the lavender extremely well. I should say who's made it. Uh, that one is by Julie Massé <clears throat> and they describe it as a timeless fougere opening with a vibrant aromatic trio of geranium, lavender, and sage, balanced with the sensual darkness of fir balsam and earthy vetiver bourbon, overdosed with musks for a sophisticated and powerful sillage, and the final touch, a subtle hint of amaretto, the impertinent Italian guilty pleasure. And it, it is all in here, and, and I should have mentioned the herbs as well. It, it, just, it just works. It really, really works in a curious way. As it dries down, it gets more and more sage-like and more um, more overtly fougère-like. Does it smell at all like food absinthe by a l'artisan, says Andy? No, because that one really was more sort of bitter absinthe-like, whereas this brings out the sweetness of the amaretto. Um, Cheeky morning stream, says Denby, almost missed it. And Cole says, my wife gave me a bottle of Le Galion special for gentlemen for my birthday today. Lovely lavender. So is it your birthday? Happy birthday to you. So that's that's one worth checking out. Then next, I was very, very taken with uh, Galeria. So let's have a respray and let's refresh my memory. Uh, where can we pop that one? Let's pop that one on here. Gosh, that one's nearly empty. I, I quite clearly have enjoyed the Galeria. Right. Yeah, now this one. This one I seem to remember, somebody, we were just talking about um, L'Artisan. This made me think of Olivia Jacobetti's Zing, but without the, 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 the cotton candy, fluffy sweetness. So this is all sort of dark, fuzzy animalics and, and, and 
snuffed out candle. One of the best snuffed candle smells that I've come across for a long time. I always think of Comte de Garçon Two Man as being a really great candle, burnt out match candle smell. But this one really pushes that idea very, very far. And it's gloomy and mysterious and dimly lit, haunting, you know, like, like, like going into, like going into a, 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 an abandoned cellar that nobody's been in for a while and you're sort of holding a candle to light the way because in this story, torches haven't been invented um, and, and mobile phones with torches haven't been invented. Um, really, really curious, really, really curious. I'll tell you what the brand says about it. A soft leather, so there you go, that's the connection with Zing, cheered up by red fruit and coffee. This was uh, composed by Dominique Mulhausen. Um, at the turn of the century, it says people would travel from far away just to buy some travel items or fine leather accessories. I guess it means to Milan. The place, so the Galleria was also known as Salotto di Milano, and deservedly so. A soft leather, uh, cheered up by red fruit and coffee, and made elegant, contemporary, and distinctive by a violet leaf absolute and an intriguing powdery facet. And intriguing, um, intriguing is right. I keep going back to Zing. Zing is a really, really interesting reference. For this one. So that's another one well worth your time. Um, these have completely thrown me because I thought I'd made my top 10 list of the year and of course now I need to reconsider. Um, and finally, this one was also really curious um, and quite, quite original. So it's called Basilica and you would be correct in assuming straight away that it's, it's an incense perfume. Um, anything that's compared to Zing warrants my attention, says Den. But yeah, this one definitely does. So it is an incense composition. But the thing that makes it really quite different from any incense that I remember smelling for quite some time is an addition of a very, very striking note of thyme, the, the herb, thyme. Um, and then, for some bizarre reason, because there's thyme and that because there's rosemary and because there must be something about the connection with the incense, it makes me think of um, the Middle Eastern, the Lebanese spice blend, zaatar. And it also makes me think specifically of zaatar bread. And don't ask me why. Maybe there's something bready, doughy, some in, in, in the handling of the incense. So you're in church, but suddenly in the middle of mass, everybody opens up a packet of zaatar bread and starts munching on the zaatar bread. And, it, and bizarre as though that sounds, it kind of works. <laughs> and this is an incense that I need to have in my collection because it, frankincense perfumes either go quite musky or they go quite sort of citrusy mineralic. I don't remember the last time one went so overtly bitter herbal, sour herbal, because there is quite something quite bitter and sour about thyme, isn't there? Which, which is what makes it distinctive. Um, but it, it just works. It's really, really curious, completely unexpected, really unusual, um, and entirely successful. And what does the brand say about this one? Where's the little bit? Incense and candlelight, they say, adorned in aromatic freshness. In the desert basilica, a cappella singing from the choir echoed by the sheer stone walls. This was made, by the way, by Violaine Collas. By the side altar, tiny lights of many candles warm up the heart. Incense and labdanum gracefully envelop the skin in a subtle warmth. Thyme and rosemary, religiously adorned in aromatic freshness, illuminate a candid milk accord. Okay, so maybe it's the milkiness that makes me think of a sort of doughiness. Cedarwood, Cypriol, and Santamanol form a woody alliance capturing the mystical aura of an ancient basilica. Um, yes, like I said, an ancient basilica in which everybody is eating zato. And Khadija says, I love zato. You've completely intrigued me. Now. I know th this really is intriguing. And maybe you wouldn't get the reference if you haven't tried zato. Um, but if you haven't tried zaatar, you really need to. You need to either put it on some halloumi or go and buy some zaatar bread or maybe make your own zaatar bread. Um, in, I remember in Dubai, now who's going to get this reference? Do you remember back in the day at Gerard's in Dubai, you used to be able to get zaatar croissants? Now, of course, you can get zaatar croissants everywhere because zaatar goes very well with, with, uh, with croissants. Um, 
So, yeah, I find candle smoke is a specific subset, says Denby, of general smoky aromas that isn't really captured by typical birch tar and cade accords. I would agree. So there you go. Quick showcase of Milano Fragrance to end the year. Let's have a quick smell again. So the, the yeah, the fougere is just so charming and happy. And, and I think what, what makes it sort of cheeky charming, because you don't ex you, you don't normally consider fougere to be, to be cheeky, but it's the amaretto here that makes this one quite cheeky. So that's a good one. Galeria, yeah, doing its strange candlelit animalic thing. And the basilica is just... Really interesting, Re really, really interesting. Um, so three standouts from what I think is gonna be a brand to watch. Okay, I am letting myself off the hook now as far as new reviews are concerned. Um, thank you very much for watching this one. I promise to give you as much notice as I possibly can of, the, uh, of when the uh, top 10 of the year is going to be. It is pretty likely that it's going to be the 30th of December. I just want to make sure that I'm saying that correctly. The 30th is the, the Thursday. Yeah, I think the 29th is looking less and less likely. And it will probably be at the usual sort of time of around about 3, 4 or 5 p.m. UK time. But as soon as I know exactly when it is, I will post the info up on, on the community tab here on YouTube and on Instagram, on social media as well. But for those of you who celebrate Christmas, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic Christmas. Don't forget Christmas oh, starts on the 25th and then goes on for 12 days. It is absolutely not the end of Christmas on the 25th. And to those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, very, very happy and peaceful uh, end of year to you. And I hope you're all safe and healthy and get to spend time with your loved ones. But until then, be good and see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.